What's happening guys? I'm here at uh, Baytown, Texas, just east of Houston, looking for a load to get back home. Finished up my furniture yesterday, and I, I thought I'd make a video about uh, fuel mileage. That's what seems like people want to know more about than anything, efficiency and fuel mileage, and, uh, and that's kind of what I'm all about. Basically because I say if I'm going to be out here, I want to be as profitable. If I, gotta have, if I have to be away from home and things like that, I want to make as much money or save, saving money is making money to me. And uh, so if I'm gonna be out here in this truck alone, away from my family, I wanna be, uh, I wanna make as much money as I can while I'm out here. That's the, that's the name of the game for me. I don't, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't care about having a cool truck. I'm, I'm cool enough without a truck. I'm just kidding, but um, yeah, this summer, uh, I can I can average nine miles a gallon, no problem, no problem at all. Uh, I put four hundred and twenty-two thousand miles on this truck. I think it's nine nine point three for uh, four hundred. I think it's four hundred twenty-two thousand. What I've tracked nine point three. So it's not a problem. I mean, I don't ever get in a seven. Sometimes, you know, I've got as much as. Let's see. I wrote that down. That might be my best ever. Now there was one better than that, but this summer, or no, no, it was uh, late September, early October, I went out to California, I fueled up in uh, Albuquerque, and then I went to Farmington, New Mexico, all the way, all the way across there uh, north of the Grand Canyon, and went to uh, St. George, Utah, made a stop there, and then I went down into Las Vegas and uh, fueled up there. And I got, uh, I've got it written down, 11.18. I think that was for 600 and, 600 and some miles. So I think as far as a marked, you know, tank full, that was the best I've ever got. So, you know, when you're up in the 11 sometimes, and then sometimes I, I get down like 8, 7, 8, 8. That's about as low as I ever get. And that, that really doesn't matter about weight. I mean, I try. That's what I'm, right now, I mean, I could have taken some other loads, but the really heavy loads so when you're when you're an independent and it really doesn't matter when you get back you don't have anybody to answer to um, and as I mentioned in my other video you know I've slowed down a lot before that's why I had two trailers um, so while I was working they were actually loading my trailer for the next week and then I wouldn't have any downtime I'd get back and drop that trailer hook on another one and leave again but now I'm only going to work every other week and uh, you know so now I'm really not in a hurry because mainly I'm down here on this is Thursday morning um, so there's no way unless it's a weekend delivery um, that I could make it back up to Indiana Kentucky by Friday so I'm in no rush I'll, probably what I'll do is just bring this load home with me and then go deliver it on Monday so yeah um, Averaging 10 miles a gallon for over 90 days is, it's not easy to do. I, I can't, normally I'm always in the nines. And that's fine, but I think, I thought that was pretty neat. When you see, uh, when you see 10 miles a gallon, and, and what I use, as I know this is all, I've said all this stuff before, but what I use is an app called uh, Fuel Gauges. It's the Kevin Rutherford app. And you can actually look my truck up if you want to. It's truck 3161. Just look that up, and uh, you can see I've got it all public. Uh, oh, like I mentioned, 422,000 miles worth of fuel tracking. You can see every single time I put fuel in this truck, where I bought it, what it cost me, uh, what my fuel mileage is, all that. So if you want to look at, look my truck up, that's fine. Um, but yeah, that's what I like about that is, so as soon as I, I can't I can't just use the uh, what's off the fuel ticket I've got to get on my Nastic app because that's where my discount is so before I even leave the fuel pump um, I put in my I uh, get on my Nastic see my discount and then I enter it into my um, fuel gauges app and then I use profit gauges his uh, accounting program and it what I like about it also is it syncs them together so it uh, takes care of my IFTA because it knows what city and state I uh, I'm fueling at 
and it syncs all already into my accounting so when I go at the end of the month through my accounting it's already in there I don't have to do anything with fuel and it takes care of a lot of my if all I have to do is basically get on there and then they've got a thing where you can uh, print off a PDF of everywhere you uh, bought fuel how many miles no not no I got to get on my uh, keep trucking for the mileage but as far as state and how many gallons I bought in each state, it's already on there. It takes me, my IFTA takes me, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes now. It's so easy with all this electronics, you know, you can say what you want about them, but as far as bookkeeping, it really, really helps. I enjoy it. Okay, I've got a list of, um, and as I mentioned, I've said all this stuff before, but it seems, you know, if you're new in the industry or you're thinking about buying a truck, you know, these are some things that could really help you. Um, I've got a list of things I, I've got written down. You know, your equipment makes, first of all, <coughs> if you're going to get a, if you're going to be pulling a drive in, make sure you get a truck with a tall sleeper on it, or at least a, a cap. So, I mean, your equipment really matters. Make sure you, that's why I, I uh, you know, I live in Indiana, but I flew to Joplin, Missouri to get this truck because it was specced exactly like I want. Um, so, you know, don't worry about if you can't buy a local truck. I just couldn't find anything I really wanted. I saw this truck. It was ex exactly what I wanted. And so I flew out there and then drove it home. So, you know, that's right off the bat. Make sure you buy something that's, you know, geared properly the way you want it. And, and it all depends on what you're going to be doing with it. And then, um, you know, when I first got this truck and this trailer I'm pulling... The best I could get is about nine and a half, and that was on a good day. But I started putting stuff on it. I uh, lengthened my skirts to where I have a very short distance between the truck and the trailer. Put the tail on it, uh, flow below all over the truck and trailer, uh, arrow flaps, moved the license plate into the bumper. I basically copied Henry Albert. Uh, Henry Albert's a uh, member of um, Freightliner Team Run Smart. I don't know what what their situation is if they give him a truck and he documents you know it's real world real world testing is what it is so Freightliner hey I'm I could do the same thing for you hook me up Freightliner with a new truck but I basically just copied what he did and uh, it when I put the tail and and linked in the skirts it re I could tell a big difference big difference um, driving habits I mean it does, you can have the best truck in the world, but if you if you're a cowboy, what people I don't you don't hear that term very much anymore, but people used to say that a lot. If you're a cowboy, and that may, basically means hard on the gas and hard on the brakes, you know, dr drive it like you got an egg under the uh, under each pedal. Really, be easy on the brakes, be easy on the gas. Um, I mean, I I get I'm I'm a little uh, eccentric about it, I guess you know. I won't even stop at the bottom. If I see a hill and let's say there's a rest area at the bottom of it, I won't stop at it because I don't want to have to work my way back up that hill. I always try to stop at the top of the hill. Uh, I never idle. Um, don't use your cruise unless it's a dead flat road. Run with your pedal. Try to keep your boost low. Things like that. Make And speed. Speed is the biggest thing. You know, uh, Slow down all you can. Especially if it's a place, you know, I can't remember if I told you this or not, but I had a, was it two winters ago, I had a Tennessee state policeman pull me over because he wanted to know why I was going so slow. And then after I talked to him about fuel mileage for about 15 minutes and he wanted to kill himself, he, uh, he, uh, he didn't, he gave me a level one and, and, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe he learned something, but I, because I told him, I said, I'm in no hurry because I was going to an Amazon they won't take you early, um, and I was told him I was just trying to save wear and tear on my truck and save fuel. Well, that's one thing I would like to do is put a lift axle on the truck and trailer. And as I and as I get to my, uh, as I look to buy another truck, I wish Freightliner would do more of that. Volvo is the only one I've really seen adopt that. Um, and it's a when I talked about the tire video. You know, it's a powered rear axle and a front lift axle. And it's all automatic where it knows how much weight you have on the truck and it'll automatically lift the axle up when it knows you, you're able to. 
Um, <laughs> you know, make sure you've got good tires. As I mentioned, these Michelins aren't cheap, but uh, uh, wow, when you know, if if there's a half mile a gallon difference in tires, which there can be, that's it, you know, a cheap tire is going to be more expensive in the end. Make sure they're inflated properly. Uh, it's better to over inflate than have it under inflated. You have a lot more flex in the sidewall of the tire. That's hard on the tires and it's hard on fuel economy. Um, for me, I can't remember if I told you that, I've experimented with the, at least the wide singles down to 80 pounds of pressure and all the way up to 120 pounds of pressure. And I kind of just went in the middle and I always keep them at 100 now. Keep on my trailer tires at 100. And on my steer tires, um, I put 10 over whatever the uh, sidewall says. So these are 14 ply tires. I have got 16 ply tires for 16 ply tires. They'll say uh, 120 on them. I'd run 130 pounds of air in them and never had a problem. Never. And I always run my steer tires around 100,000 miles and I take them off and just use them as trailer tires. Another good thing about, you know, having your own trailer, um, you know, you can use your steer tires as trailer tires and shoot. By the time I run them for 100,000 miles on my steer, then they go back to the trailer for who knows how long that's what I mean I've got I've got four tires in my barn right now that are just you know spares and and I've got a couple old tires uh, they're China tires on this trailer they are the toughest tire I bought this trailer in 2018 and they're still not even close to worn out that must be the hardest rubber on earth but I'm thinking about pulling them off and I've got a couple match steer tires I think I'm gonna put in its place then I'll have a brand new line of tires on the front axle and then I'll have all good steer tires on the rear axle it's just I guess my OCD um, oh boost leaks uh, check check for boost leaks uh, make sure your overheads good oil sample here's a I thought I'd show you something I made I put it in another video this is a uh, one of these uh, coffee tumblers or you know you can put cold or hot drinks in them you see that I just put an automotive uh, valve stem and I drilled a hole through it and then put the stem inside here and then pulled it back through and what you can do what I did at least is uh, take your right tube off your charger cooler this is the exact <coughs> sorry this is the exact same size as that pipe put this in here clamp it and then you can feed air to this and uh, don't go crazy with it and then you can take soapy water and spray around mine I actually I could hear it it was the crossover tube for the EGR uh, had a leak and just that little leak when I fixed maybe it was me thinking but no it wasn't because I could see it in my fuel mileage it really really just that little boost leak you could tell a difference in it so yeah check for boost leaks yeah so I mean I don't really know what else to say about it um, that's just a list of things that I can think of uh, speed's the easiest thing and then when it comes to buying tires um, you know check on that calculator like I said about uh, low low rolling resistance tires and I know something I didn't say the last time was uh, it's not just Michelin tires on there it's basically every brand of tire you know any major brand Firestone Bridgestone Goodyear all of them are on there Yokohama as long as it's not a no-name uh, Chinese tire it'll be on there and and there there's comparisons where you can do them side to side and uh, yeah like I said there's a lot of tires better than Michelin some of them now as far as wide singles I, I wouldn't go with anything else I don't think I just think they're the uh, best built tire and if you've ever felt one of those tires people are worried about them. those are 20 ply tires I mean they are heavy very very heavy duty tires um, one of those tires is capable of holding 10,100 pounds at, at 120 pounds of pressure. So, I mean, they're very, very tough tires. So, that's going to do it for this one. I need to get up and quit playing on YouTube and, and find me a load to get back home. All right, signing off from Baytown. Talk to you later.